good deeds but consistently brothers and sisters in Islam use your skills and don't think that everybody has to learn Islamic education everyone has to know this the fundamentals of Islam all of us but none of you not all of you have to become scholars some become scholars some become some other things don't think that what we call it secular education, mathematics and engineering all of that stuff this is good learn it but use it and see how you can use it into Islam Imam Shafi'i, he was an encyclopedist, he was an uh, astronomist, uh, he was an expert in medicine, he was an expert in poetry and many other things other than a scholar. And he used to say, the ummah left a large portion of this deen which is medicine. And the Quran speaks about aquatic life, about astronomy, about uh, uh, psychology, about medicine, about all these things. So if that's your area, go for it. Imam Malik's son, Imam Malik's son, he didn't become a scholar. And Imam Malik used to say to him, come and learn, come and learn. And he would say, no, no, I don't want it, I don't want it. He learned the basics. And Imam Malik said, subhanallah, who, may, who did not make knowledge an inheritance. And this tells us that, look, let your children go into an area that they enjoy, but just make sure that what they go into is halal, within Islamic limits, and see how you can use it. We need IT professionals, we need graphic designers, we need people in the media, we need people who represent us in all these ways. If everybody became a alim and a scholar, Really, I mean, we live in a world, whether you like it or not, technology is advancing and we live in a world of marketing. We live in a world where we need to know all those other areas. Like Salman al-Farisi, he taught the Muslims how to build a trench. The Muslims never knew this idea, but he brought it from the Persian world. And because of that, Allah brought victory to the Muslims out of that. That's why we, the Muslims reached Persia after that. Technology is, 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 is excellent to learn, but use it in the course of Islam. Don't become doctors and all of that stuff and engineers and accountants and, and uh, technicians in even plumbing, electrician or whatever you may become. It's all excellent, mashaAllah. But don't become these things and then isolate yourself from the community. We want to benefit. Allah gives you something, give back. Give back, my brothers and sisters. How wonderful it would be when I heard that lots of Muslims here have got organizations and businesses which they've established themselves and we don't need to go anywhere else. We find our employment with each other. That's what the Jews do. That's why they're successful in that. Employ each other and, live and let us grow ourselves from it within each other inshallah and then benefit other people. Brothers and sisters, your temptations and your desires. Wallahi, I'm an advocate of people getting married at a young age. And brothers and sisters, the elderly, I encourage you to help. If you have the financial means and support, support your, your, your children to get married at a young age. Don't be afraid. Even if they're still at university. Yani at least get them engaged in first year. It, wallahi, it helps. At, at, in the end, it saves them from a lot of things. I'm really an advocate of that. and Give them the support. I mean, I was still at university when I was married. I was finishing my final year. It helped me focus much more. It helped me focus much more. Uh, my young brothers and sisters, do not resort to, the, to the, uh, the secularist Western ways of relationships. This is not the right way. It only causes you harm. Brothers and sisters, your Islam and your deen is the greatest asset that you have. And the Sahabas are the greatest role models that you can ever have. Use them as your role models and work with them. Every single Sahaba has a particular example and lesson that you can learn from. You will find it. I'll give you a name, Tha'laba radiallahu anhu. Another name, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu. Another name, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abu Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah. Give you another name, uh, Suhail radiallahu anhu. For the sisters, I've given you many names which I mentioned before as well. Learn from them and use them as your role models. Inshallah, you'll feel really good about yourself. It'll give you much encouragement, inshallah ta'ala. As a young man, insha'Allah, myself, I consider myself a youth still. It is, was my pleasure and my honor to speak to young people and also to elderly. It was my pleasure and my honor to be here in Sri Lanka, this wonderful country. And my perception has become even better than what it was before. I have a lot to go back to Australia and tell the people about. I am impressed very much, alhamdulillah, and feel proud that you have a strong board, a collective board of great scholars and imams who help guide you in your affairs of life. And I have met some of them and I have privileged to have sat with them. Use them as your guide, inshallah. I am privileged to have met lots of religious people, many young people who are memorizing the Quran, mashallah. And I can see many faces 
that insha'Allah will become one of those. My advice to you, however, is don't just memorize the Quran without knowing its meaning. Try to also learn its meaning and practice it, uh, insha'Allah, and that will complete your virtue, bi'idhnihi ta'ala. Be dutiful towards your parents, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, and you will have a longer life, a happier life, and you will feel proud. And you will get married, insha'Allah, and feel happy in your marriage, and your children will be as well. Elderlies, please, my brothers and sisters, take this advice, insha'Allah, from me as your son, insha'Allah, because I lived through this, and I want to remind you that you also lived through this, your children living through it now. Talk to them subtly, and young brothers and sisters, talk to your parents. Don't think they're older, an older generation. They know what you've been through. And let them explain your thoughts, and don't be embarrassed. If you have any questions and you feel embarrassed, ask the ulama. Email me if you want. Email other scholars around the world. Talk. Don't let it stay inside of you and let it eat you away. Talk. Ask questions, insha'Allah, and relieve yourself from it, insha'Allah. There is no aib in halal. In halal, meaning if you want to seek knowledge, there's no such thing as being embarrassed of it. Don't be embarrassed, but ask with adab, insha'Allah ta'ala. Finally, I'd like to make a, a dua for my brothers and sisters in, in, in Sri Lanka. So please say ameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Allahumma salli ala nabiyyika wa ala alihi wa man tabi'ahu bi ihsan ila yawm al-deen Allahumma inni as'aluka bi asma'ika al-husna wa bi sifatika al-ula as'aluka bi kulli ismin huwa lak sammayta bihi nafsak aw anzaltahu fi kitabik aw allamtahu ahadan min khalqik aw istathartahu bihi fi ilm al 